Oh, oh, show your ride. This is Battle Rap. Hold it down. Hey, sound waves. Shout out to Damn I'm Wild and New Era Podcast. Hey. Huh? I didn't even want to do this blog, bruh. I didn't. I really didn't want to speak on none of this champion of the year shit because I respect my peers. I'm well aware of what, the, what they had to endure or what they had to go through just to complete that list and make it look like it's something respectable. And I ain't want to step on nobody's toes. But there's so much shit being said and so many things that happened since the announcement of Chilla Jones winning. <sighs> Bruh. I waited out all the top bloggers. I waited out all of the low-tier media. I waited out all the mid-tier media. I waited for the snow to get done talking this shit. The snow been talking shit. My boy, if you ain't got to go outside, don't go outside, my boy. Huh? That shit high as hell. I waited for everybody to get finished, and even the battle rappers is talking shit. I got... Media, my nigga Henny man going at it with motherfuckers. <laughs> Shout out to Henny. I, I see A Ward going crazy. I see Polo on the timeline wilding. Oh my, everybody is making me sad that we can't come together as a culture. <laughs> as a culture. Bro, I'm really about to cry. Like, my eyes is tearing, son. So, I got my handy dandy list here. Listen, my nigga, we gonna chop it up real quick. We gonna talk some shit. Champion of the year shit. Talk. What up, y'all? Fat boy main in attendance. Your favorite blogger's favorite blogger. The best blogger that y'all don't really watch like that. Y'all don't be fucking with me like that, bro. But I respect it. Man. Y'all niggas, you got your preference. You got your pick. You watch who you want to watch, my nigga. I ain't mad at you. So let's do it like this. I got a list here of shit I wanted to go through. I didn't want to skip none of the topics that I thought was important. Shit that I'm seeing people complain about, fuss about, gripe about. You know, just, just speak their mind on. Maybe it ain't complaining. I don't know. All the different things. So this is where I wanted to start. KOTD and RBE. All right. I'm seeing so many people say, yo, if you're not on URL, you can't win. Yo, this is a URL award. Okay. First things first, bro. Let's do this. How many events did KOTD even have for you to put together enough of a resume to win this shit this year how many events did they have in 2020 how many events did RBE have in 2020 between the two of them how many events could you possibly have battled on in total and have enough of a resume to compete with niggas like Sugar Jones and B-Dot Geechee Gotti K-Shine like are y'all being realistic? Like, I'm at the point now where I'm starting to wonder, like, are y'all just wanting the controversy? Do you just want somebody not on URL to win? Do you feel like the people not on URL should get a higher spot up the list? Like, I'm not, I'm not understanding exactly what y'all are expecting to happen for people that's not on URL. I ask, I'm going to ask again. How many events did they even have for them to put together enough of a resume to make it high up the list? And then you got to factor in, do you have a name worthy enough to battle the, the necessary names to make your resume heavy enough to compete with the names at the top of the 2020, the 2020 list? Like, be realistic. O-Rad was able to do that, and he battled... Uh, on RBE and on URL. So it's not impossible entirely, but you got to have a name worthy enough to battle a certain level of opponents. Now, in regards to Saint and Marv 1, people are super overlooking the fact that the finals of that tournament did not count. So you could not factor that in to 2020. 
So, of course, they're going to be sitting a little further down the list than some people would expect. But that's because of the obvious reason. They didn't have the finals yet. So before you could accredit that to their, accredit that to their resume, the year had already ended. So that's my thoughts on that. I thought that Marv 1 and Saint definitely deserved to be on the list. But I'm also one of the people, one of the rare people who just, in my mind, I didn't put a lot of stock into the tournament that URL had or that KOTD had. None of the tournaments. I didn't put a lot of stock into those tournaments. And I'm going to kind of go over some of the reasons why at the end of the day. That's topic number one. Number two, Anwar. Anwar, Anwar, Anwar. Anwar, you know I fuck with you, bro. But I got, listen, this, this is my stance on this. Number one, if you just up and leave at number five, right? You do realize that you have now tainted everybody from 20 to, to five or six, should I say. Like your input was put into that list, that up to that point. So the people on that list, if you leave, can now say, well, the, the list is tainted because we didn't even have all the judges and one of them was low-key considered biased or whatever. Like you now... <laughs> You now alter everybody gonna want to argue and fight and fuss and shit, right? And then my thing is, if you was gonna leave, if you felt like potentially you would be viewed as biased, why even do any of it at all, bro? Like, I, I get what you was trying to do integrity-wise, and I fully understand. And you know, you don't want this to be tainted. You know, champion of the year, like you said, it is a a highly respected award. It's a highly respected panel and situation. It's a privilege to be a part of it. I was honored to be a part of it last year, and I, and I hold that high on my resume of accomplishments that I've had as a blogger. So you don't want to ruin the integrity of it, but at the same time, it's like, bro, if, if you're not going to do right by it, then just don't do it. Just don't include yourself. That's, that's just my opinion on it. But salute to Anwar. You know what I'm saying? Salute to the whole panel. Like I said in the beginning, I, I'm fully aware of what it takes to have to put that whole list together and get everything right it's never going to be right it's never going to be 100 percent correct and you can always make an argument no matter how accurate you think your list is there's loopholes in it somewhere that's just the way that it is it's all opinionated and nothing is set in stone for you to make a solid judgment on it. all right so i got a bunch of things here let me try to move quickly with the rest of this a war all right a war is one of those people who his name supersedes his resume, right? He battles on a bunch of small leagues that a lot of people don't really see. And you hear about people telling you all year, like if you haven't been watching his battles, you hear about people telling you all year, A-War been kicking niggas ass and he had a dope battle versus this person versus that person. So you want to put a lot of stock into uh, his abilities and who he is, his reputation supersedes him. At the end of the day, when you look at what actually happened throughout his year, to me, it doesn't carry the weight that he may think it carries. And I'm going to explain why. In my opinion, obviously. Number one, since the first champion of the year, Jay Black has clearly stated, one rounders don't really carry a lot of weight. Obviously, you get credit for the one-rounders, and, you know, those were battles. But they don't carry nearly the same weight as a three-round battle. They just don't. So, if you had, you know, four, five, six of them, or however many it might have been, whatever, right? They don't carry as much weight as you think they do. The same rule applies for the two-on-two -two battles. As great as a two-on-two -two as that battle was. Loso and Awar versus Geechee and... B dot. Great fucking battle. Just doesn't carry the weight. It's not a one-on-one -on -one battle. You had an you had a teammate with you, and so it doesn't have the same weight. You look at battling um Danny Myers, and you look at battling O Red, who wasn't at his peak performance, and that's not Avor's fault. But basically, you getting credit for two names. How much weight do you think that carries into this list, bro? 
Like, how much could it carry at that point? If the one-rounders don't carry the same weight and neither do the two-on-two, you walk in the head really waving the name of O-Red and Danny Myers. I just don't see how you think that that should hold so much weight or why 20 is a bad number. I really don't. But like I said, because it's A-Ward, I think a lot of people just going, nah, he nice. Yeah, it's not about him being nice. We already know that. The resume has to match the position that you're being put in. So whether he deserved to be on the list or 20 was too low or whatever the case may be, I'm fully I'm fully okay with his position. And I didn't really have an argument with it. I mean, I wasn't in the room, but I don't have an argument with it. Now, I'm going to make an argument here that a lot of people might not understand. The name Jerry West came up, right? Okay. Jerry West didn't make the top 20. I got another name that I want to sit right beside that, and I want you to tell me the difference. Y'all ready? Jaden Nightwing. Jerry West didn't make the list. Jaden Nightwing is sitting in the top 10. Now, I want you to explain me the difference in their years. Jaden Nightwing beat Saga who was choking. Jaden Nightwing beat Shotgun Shug, who was choking. Am I right or wrong? Okay. Now, he won the battles, but the competition wasn't elite, right? At that, I mean, they didn't put up great performances. So, they're not replayable battles. They don't have great value. You know what I'm saying? But he won those battles. So, you got to give him credit for that. Look at Jerry West. Jerry West beat Danny Myers, who was choking. Jerry West also beat B Magic, who also was not somebody who was having a crazy year or is at peak performance right now. Right? So, so far, they both have wins over names that wasn't performing very well. You following me? Okay, so Jerry West had a debatable, a very good battle with Chilla Jones. Well, Jaden Nightwing had a very good battle with Real Sick to start the tournament. That's one of the better battles of that tournament. They were very both very good battles. Now, the difference is Jaden Nightwing won in a judge tournament, and Jerry West didn't beat Chilla Jones, but it was a very good battle. Well, Jerry West, for the most part, the rest of his battles, he didn't really win. Well, look at Jaden Nightwing. He had Luke Castro in the next round, who kind of fucked up his second or his third. So he kind of helped himself lose. And then he damn near lost the battle to Rue fucking Bando. He was, Rue Bando was a good third away from replacing Jaden Nightwing. So uh, if you're looking at both resumes, how the fuck is Jerry West not on the list? But Jaden Nightwing, who had a similar year, so to speak, is way up in the top 10. Did I say something weird? I thought I was just speaking facts just now. I thought I was speaking facts just now. If I'm not, please tell me. To have one on the list in the top 10 and one not on the list, to me, that's good. like I said, there's loopholes everywhere, bro, if you look close enough. The next name on the list for me was Real Sick. I think he placed the 14. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and say that he should have been top five or nothing crazy like that. But I want you to look at the year he had, bro. Just look at it real quick. He was in one of the best battles of the tournament, right? That first round battle versus Jaden Nightwing, the eventual finals participant. Very good battle. He had an exhibition battle versus Kid Chaos. That was also very, very good. An extremely good battle. Debatable, right? Then he had a classic top 10 battle with Chilla Jones. And then he smoked B-Magic. Now, again, B-Magic is not a crazy opponent right now at this point in his career. But nobody had done the B-Magic what that nigga did. That was in fucking credible, dog. So you telling me that his run wasn't better than the list that I ran off for Jaden Nightwing? How is it not? Now, it, here's an issue I'm getting ready to run into because I know if you've been watching my channel enough, you probably getting ready to start coming to the conclusion like, I don't think this nigga fuck with Jaden Nightwing. I don't think this nigga fuck with Fonz based on what I'm getting ready to say. 
Easy the block captain. Again, shout out to Fonz, shout out to Jay. I do fuck with them, but I'm I'm just here to be real about what I really think. And if I'm wrong, I stand on that. I'm wrong, just tell me. In the comment section, tell me what you really think. Easy the block captain had a better year than Fonz. He just did. I know he finished at number nine. He could have finished higher. Right? I'm not mad at him sitting at nine. He deserved to be somewhere in the top ten. But uh, listen, let's be realistic here. How many veteran wins does Fonz have outside of the tournament? And I know you're going to say, well, Fonz beat Easy and Fonz won the whole tournament. Well, this is why I didn't put that much stock into the tournament. Niggas who was in that tournament, to me, still had a better year than motherfuckers who won the shit. Easy beat Danny Myers. Easy beat Don Marino in the tournament, a motherfucker who had mad experience coming into the tournament. He was one of the people that people thought could win it all, right? He beat Cortez, bro. He had an incredible battle with Fonz, right? Fonz got the win, but like Fon, like Easy will tell you, look at the app. The fans feel like Easy won that fucking battle. You don't just beat Danny Myers like that. You don't just beat Cortez like that. If you knew, they, what? New niggas don't just beat them two names like that. That don't happen. This is the difference for me. Easy to block captain came out of 2020 as the face of the new class. He shifted the way we look at the new names. He was a big part of that. His battles and his impact on 2020 is incredible. Not only did he change the way we look at the new names and how we viewing them currently at this moment, that nigga branded himself into the, the status of top tier going into 2021. How did he not have more of an impact than Fonz? Fonz's best battle is versus Av. In, in the room, if you watch the, 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 the panel, damn near the whole room had Av beating Fonz. I thought it was debatable, but they, they most of them niggas had Av beaten Fonz, right? His best battle after that is the battle with Easy, and then he had an eh battle with Ace Amin. The battle with Jay was not that crazy, but he definitely won. You know what I'm saying? And the battle with Jay Kruger in the first round was pretty good. So you telling me that your best battle was a debatable with Av? And you had a couple decent battles in the tournament that you won outside of the easy battle. And easy beat Danny Myers. And he beat Cortez and Don Marino. Along with the fact that he had a classic battle with Fonz. How is his year not slightly better? But his impact overall was way more. So for me, that's the way I'm looking at easy situation. I felt like he should have finished ahead of Fonz. Or anybody in that class. That's just my opinion. Um, Holmesy the God. I'm not so sure if I'm mad at Holmesy's spot, but I will acknowledge the fact that people who are complaining about him having a high rank, bruh, he beat Saga. I know he's not having the greatest of the year, but going into that, people thought Saga was going to redeem himself and smoke this tournament. That didn't happen. He ran into Holmesy. Emerson Kennedy smoked his first round opponent, pulled up in the second round. Holmes, he sent his ass packing. Danny Myers, another name, sent his ass packing. Bill Collector sent his ass packing. Like, bro, the man went through four number one seeds to win that fucking tournament. They wasn't nobodies. So everybody he beat. People saw them potentially winning the fucking tournament. Now, I know he got his teeth kicked in versus B-Dot, who we about to speak about in a second, but come on, bro. Come on, bro. Give Holmesy his respect, bro. Don't play with his name. He did have a bad battle versus B-Dot, like I said, but that shouldn't define the whole year that he had. That tournament was great for him. The, the names that he faced was different than the, the stretching names that everybody else had to go through. It was a little different to me, in my opinion. 
let's talk about this top three. It's my last thing on the list. I hate to do this because I super respect K Shine and what he did in 2020. I got a lot of respect for it. But I feel like it's kind of a disrespect to B Dot for him to not at least at a minimum finish number two. I watched what he had to say on the URL recap of the Champion of the Year event and everything he said to me was accurate. I used my ballot to vote for B Dot and I originally had K Shine. Now let's talk about K Shine for just a second. K Shine was being called the best battle rapper on the planet in 2020. He had dominant performances. He had really good performances versus E Heart and versus Chess, right? Now, you may not have been impressed with how the battle turned out versus Pat Stay, but that's not all his fault. You may not have been impressed with his win over Charlie Clips, but let's, let's keep it a buck here. Charlie Clips is a Mount Rushmore name. Pat Stay is a candidate for Mount Rushmore type shit. E Hart is an easy candidate for female Mount Rushmore type names. Like, he didn't battle walkover type motherfuckers. And Chess was a flat out grudge match. Somebody that was gunning for him, and he brought nothing but fire to that battle for K Shine. And K Shine walked through all that shit, regardless of how good you thought the battle was or wasn't. He walked through all that shit. He did not prepare, practice, rehearse, or none of that shit thinking to myself, I'm going to prepare at 110% even though my opponents is going to quit on me or not give me a match to what I'm doing and when this battle happened. And they only going to be at 60-70%. That's not his fault. The level of competition that he battled to only lose a round to clips, in my opinion, I thought was super fucking impressive. And I thought that his performance versus Paste wasn't bad. I think it just looked not good considering how the battle turned out. All that being said, B-Dot and Chilla Jones' resume like, was just better. The way that battles turned out and the, the level of content that they were bringing to the table. I think K-Shine's situation was that his overall performances were very good, right? He had two very good overall performances versus e Hart and Chess, but at the end of the day, you gotta look at the fact that yeah, the Clips battle just wasn't that appealing. The past state battle wasn't that appealing. You can't say that about any of Chilla's battles. You can't say that about any of B-Dot's battles. Let's go over B-Dot's resume, bro. B-Dot had multiple Battle of the year implications. Multiple. The two on two, which don't carry the same weight, so, but we're gonna respect that it did have those battle of the year type implications on it. You're gonna respect the fact that he had battle of the year implications with uh the saga. He smoked T bro, he smoked T Top. And he smoked the nigga that won the fucking tournament on Summer Madness, bro. Y'all heard his argument on the stream, right? His year was so incredible that literally, literally, he was a couple stumbles away from having a debatable win or debatable loss, depending on who you are and what you prefer, with Chilla Jones from not having no losses at all. Like, he, he amazed that the nigga smoked Rum Nitty. You don't just smoke Rum Nitty and smoke T-Top. Nobody, you don't just do that. That don't just happen, bro. How do you not put more respect on what he did this year? Now, you saw Jay Black and my nigga Bad Money. Shout out to both of them. You saw both of them say they thought that Twerk beat Chilla Jones. You had multiple people in the culture saying, yo, I thought... It's real sick beat Chilla Jones. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't see people saying that B Dot had two clear losses this year or two losses this year. Maybe the one to Chilla, but that was it. The battle with Saga was debatable. I, I think I did see B Dot say that he thought he 30 Saga. 
And if that, I mean, that's his opinion. I'm not going to argue with that man if he feel like that's what he got. But I feel like it was a debatable battle. I still don't have a clear cut winner in that situation, but I don't feel like he lost, even if it's debatable. So for me, just looking at the resume that B Dot put together and the quality of the battles that he had, they just they exceed what K Shan had put together. And again, it's not all his fault what his opponents did, but bro. B Dot had some incredible battles, bro. Shout out to Chilla Jones. Chilla Jones had an incredible year, bro. He fought some of the illest names in battle rap. His resume was crazy. And when it mattered the most, when he was facing B Dot at the end of the year, whether you felt like that was for the title or not, if that battle was going to decide it, he was determined the victor by a lot of people. So you got to respect the outcome that Chilla Jones was considered champion of the year. He was incredible. His content, his material was impressive all year long. So I understand him winning. So they just some of the takes that I got, bro. Let me know what y'all think. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell me where you think I'm wrong. Tell me what your argument is for who should have won what and why. It's your man, Fat Boy, signing out, man, the same way I always do. I respect the culture. I advise you niggas to do the same. Hey, yo, Posey. Glad you back, my nigga. Take us home. I'm a real nigga with 6,000. <laughs>